Studies tell us that 75% of people who do this see a massive plummet in their stress hormones. So I'm challenging myself and I'm challenging you to spend a week doing this to see how it impacts your mental health. Plus, I'll share the five steps that will make this as easy as possible for you to start implementing this into your daily life. When I was researching this video, I came across a study that said you don't have to be good at art for it to be calming. So I am, I am gonna believe that study and we're gonna see how I feel after. Let's go do art. Yay. I am a chronic workaholic, so it's really hard for me to do something that recharges me if it's not like gonna make me money <laughs> or be productive in some way. But I, my brain feels like a little calm marshmallow floating on a lake and I really like it. It didn't take me very long. It, this, this was like 15, 20 minutes and I feel great and I made some funny looking carrots. So the first step in your journey is simply to recognize the benefits. Like we just witnessed, it's really good at decreasing stress, but it also gives you the opportunity to connect with other people. Even if you're the biggest introvert in the world who avoids parties like the plague, you still need human connection. Doing things like a weekend soccer league has been found to decrease depression and anxiety. It doesn't mean that your hobby has to be a sport or even a super extroverted activity. For example, I love reading by myself but I'm in a book club that meets once a month to talk about YA fantasy books. I get the community I desperately need and I get to chat about the books that I'm obsessed with. And recently it has been these infinite threads. It is so freaking good, it's a win-win. And if you need any more convincing that hobbies are good for you, let me blow your mind with this little nugget. The elixir of life may not be a real thing, but there are tangible things you can do to make your life longer. And they involve, guess what? You'll never guess. There's just no way that you could ever guess. It's hobbies. Studies have shown that things like cooking, crafting, playing, and drawing lower your blood pressure, which causes lower risk of heart disease and stroke. So you don't need to feel guilty taking time to enjoy your hobbies. You're literally helping yourself live longer. But it can be hard to know what the best hobby is for you, especially when there's so many to choose from. I've never been a video game person. Like when I was a kid, my brother always played like the shooty games and I just, I don't know how to do the things and I feel very out of my element, but my husband plays a lot of Super Mario Brothers and just loves it. So recently he got me a Switch so that I can play Animal Crossing, which is the only game in my whole life that I've ever been able to play and have enjoyed playing. It's my favorite game. Remember when you were a little kid and your most important decision was choosing whether or not to play with Legos or Barbies? It's time to get back to your inner child to figure out what hobby would bring you joy. First, let's just define what a hobby is. I consider it anything you do during your off hours that you look forward to. This is obviously a huge scope, which is why I think it's important to think about your favorite activities when you were a child. Did you enjoy video games? Consider buying a Switch or a PlayStation and trying one of the games that you used to love. If you grew up on Harvest Moon for N64, then you'll love Stardew Valley, which is basically Harvest Moon on steroids. And listen, there's a lot of things I miss about childhood, but the great thing about being an adult is you can do whatever you want. Say your parents didn't want you to do the rock wall at the fair because it was too dangerous. Guess what? As an adult, a great hobby for you would be joining a rock climbing gym. It gets you moving, you have the opportunity for social connection, and it meets a deep inner need that never got to be fulfilled. To get started, brainstorm a list of what your hobbies could be, and then pick one or two that you're most excited about. Okay, there's a craft I loved doing when I was a little kid, and I kind of forgot that I had all the ingredients. This, yeah. Okay, so. When I was a kid, and yes, I am a 90s baby, the best possible activity I could be using with my afternoon is making little pony bead crafts. Do you guys remember these geckos? I'm gonna turn on some British Bake Off and I honestly feel 
kind of giddy to do this, so yeah, let's, let's make a toast, shall we? Yes, okay. Do six layers on each cake, yeah. Um, so it should be six, six yeah. times four. Yeah. I have to admit something to you. I don't want to do this today. <laughs> it's late. I have left this to the very last minute, and I have so much to do, and I don't feel like my time is well spent coloring, which is the activity that I have planned for myself for Thursday. Oh, hello, buddy. You want to say hello? I'm just gonna do it for 10 minutes and see how I feel. Let's freaking go! Let's color! I love you so much. <laughs> okay, well, that cheered me up more than any amount of coloring. So <sighs> that was just, that was really cute. This is surprisingly relaxing though. Like just even the sound of the colored pencil against the paper and then like having his little sweet presence here, just being adorable and keeping me company while I do little so the Thursday of this challenge was obviously really rough for me because it, it felt like a waste of time. And I realized the problem was that I had put it into my schedule kind of as an afterthought. So all of a sudden it's 9 p.m. and I have to fit in a hobby that day. You might feel that too, just so overwhelmed by work and the responsibilities of life that it, it's stressful just to even think about doing a hobby. Which brings us to step three of making your hobby actually achievable on a daily basis. Contrary to how I'm forcing myself to do a hobby every day, like in this video, you don't actually have to do that. Instead, look at your calendar over the next few weeks. Try to find a couple hours to work on your hobby. This could be getting up a little earlier on a Saturday or carving out half an hour before bed. But there's something I wanna invite you to try that can make it more common for you to fit your hobbies into your daily life. Because during the day, we might be on autopilot. We don't think about the decisions we're making, like scrolling through Instagram or watching TV. I work from home, so during my lunch break, I always watch TV, either The Office or British Bake Off. But now I have a bunch of hobbies to choose from. So instead of sitting down and zoning out for an hour, I can do like a little micro break, sit down and do a little water coloring, sit down and play a little Animal Crossing. Sometimes though, and I get it, using hobbies to fight burnout just isn't enough. Like the time that I was working so much that I fell into this really dangerous pattern. If I wasn't working, I was playing addictive games on my phone or binging Grey's Anatomy. By itself, playing games, watching TV, that's not not bad, but the problem is I was doing it every single spare second of my life and the reason I was doing that was trying to mask all of the icky feelings that were inside. But I didn't want to tell my friends and family what was going on because I was embarrassed. I wanted to seem like I had it all together. So I spent months this way, just sinking deeper and deeper and deeper into depression. It is the darkest time of my life that I've ever had and it sucked. If I could go back in time, I would make myself talk to a therapist. This is step four, and it's honestly the most important step. And it's brought to you by the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. The truth is you cannot fight burnout alone. You just can't. So finding a trained advocate to help you along this journey is the smartest way to approach this. One thing I love about BetterHelp is it connects you with a licensed therapist who's trained to listen and give you unbiased, helpful advice. They can help you pinpoint what exactly is causing your burnout and then figure out the best ways to prevent it. Plus, like all of the tips in this video, it doesn't take that long. All you have to do is go to their site. You can use my link, betterhelp.com slash and answer a few questions. 
then BetterHelp will match you with a professional who has spent years of their life helping people who also struggle with burnout. And for the extreme introverts out there who don't wanna leave the house or put on real clothes, don't worry. You can do it all from your phone or your computer via video chat, messaging, or phone call, literally whatever makes you the most comfortable. Visit betterhelp.com slash Abby Howe, or you can choose Abby Howe during sign up to enjoy a special discount on your first month. Hello, it's Friday, and on the advice of my current therapist, when I'm having a hard day, and I am having a hard day, it has just been, oh, it's been a week. So um, she told me that it, it's nice if I just take some time just to be unproductive to do something that brings me joy. And you know what brings me joy? Thrifting. And there's a new thrift store that I haven't been to that I've heard really good things about. And I literally heard about it months ago and I haven't made the time to go. So on this rainy Friday, we are gonna go to the thrift store and hopefully find some treasures. Yes, Miley and Beyonce. Let's get it. Didn't find any treasures, but that was one of the most charming thrift stores I have ever been in. It's like this, it's in this old church. Yeah, it must be an old church. It's just like these lofted ceilings and oh my gosh, it's it's beautiful. Um, I did find this like J. Crew shirt that looked kind of fun. Um, Cause you know, I just wear like t-shirts and, and, and tank tops every day. So I'm like, maybe I could mix it up. But to be honest, I'm not really in a spendy mood. Um, so I didn't get anything and I'm fine with that because it was nice to walk around and be around other people. I think while I'm out, I'm gonna go get coffee. All right, coffee's acquired. I got a drip coffee, co coffee? <laughs> and I got Johnny a cold brew. Time to head back home, go back to work. I, I am in a much better, brighter mood than I was when I got in the car to do this. So um, thank you therapist and thank you Abby making myself do this video. <laughs> but even if you followed all the advice in this video, that doesn't mean that you're gonna get to the end of your day and not hear this voice in your head. I should have been more productive. It's time to tell that internal voice to take a hike because the truth is, Taking time for your hobbies actually makes you more productive. A study revealed that people who have creative hobbies are better at problem solving and feel more positive about work. So next time you wanna feel more productive, take a little time for your hobbies. Your work week is going to thank you. But if you're experiencing an awful burnout day, I'm talking like it's 3 p.m., you've done nothing, you feel awful. In this next video, I'm mapping out a strategy that can help you turn that day around while also showing you how I turned around one of my worst burnout days ever. 